Hey everyone, welcome back to James' Repair Shop. Well, a special one for you here now. Working on the 65 Thunderbird hardtop. So this car came equipped with a cruise control unit. No idea how many have, doesn't matter how many did, how many didn't. Uh, but it doesn't work. It's not working for me. So I have the manual out and that's not a good sign when I have to dig the manual out because uh, this is all new to me. So let's get into the book and we'll identify all the parts. And I do know that the bellows for the servo that run the linkage that goes to the carburetor uh, needed to be replaced. So quite a long time ago I ordered one of those and I have it. Uh, the rest of the stuff I have no parts for so if we need something, well, we'll have to go from there. All right, let's take a look at the book and see what components this has first. And if you're following along, if you don't have these components, well, I guess you're going to have to get them to get your cruise control going. But if you don't have uh, anything to go by, you don't know which ones to order. So let's, let's go through and then we'll kind of check out each unit after that, each component to see what it does, uh, how it works, test it to make sure it's working the best I can. Like I'm, again, I'm new to this one. All right, let's get into her. the first page of the speed control set up here and we're going to start identifying these pieces bits and bobs of this thing so one of the first things that show up figure one is a an engagement relay right there and then we also have this which is the metering valve unit right here so I know where that is I'll show you right now where the metering valve unit is it's right over here so with that engagement relay is up under the dash. And when I get up under the dash, I'll show you where it is. So we'll get over here on the next page of this. It's the uh, sensor pump. Right here is the sensor pump. Now we're not going to go into detail on all those as we go. We're just going to identify what we have right now. And that was figure three. So figure four is the vacuum valve. Back over here and you probably already saw it. It's right there. So it's intact. Whether it works or not, I don't know. So then we get over to the servo. That's what I was talking about with the bellows. And it's back there. You can see the servo back in that, that lot, back in there. And the next one is number six. So that's up under the dash as well. That's the brake switch. We'll check that out with the relay at the same time. And the other part of this is a servo linkage. Well, the servo's in place. And also the servo linkage is all in place. It's right here. You can see it. It's okay. So we know the linkage is there, is there, the servo's there. So inside the car, we have the, uh, I, I wish I could shut the autofocus off on this camera. I don't seem to be able to. Anyhow, there's a switch that activates it. You pull up on that switch. That switch is a, an electromagnet. And when it's in the up position with the engine uh, with ignition on, it'll stay up. As soon as you shut, shut the ignition off, it drops down. We'll test that. There's this uh, speed control wheel with a cable that goes to the metering valve, which is right here. This is the metering valve, and here is that cable right here. So that's in place. All right, so under the dash here, and we have the brake switch. It's intact. And we also have that relay and it appears to be plugged in the wires look in pretty good shape so let's go out and see what's on the console at the console and here's that wheel I was talking about the speed selector wheel it's it's supposed to be able to move freely and it's not so there may be an issue with that I don't know it may work once the engine's running I really don't know again we're just learning as we go and here's the little switch that I was talking about that activates the speed control itself so you pull up on it and it won't stay up until you've turned the ignition on so the ignition turned on and now it'll stay up so I know that works so if I shut the ignition off that should drop back down and it does so that's all seems to be working now whether it's whether it's activating that uh, vacuum valve or not I don't know we'll see this here could be an issue I'm not sure what's going on here with this little wheel. All it is is just moves that cable. So 
I may end up taking the console apart on this yet. I don't want to, but I may have to take this centerpiece out. Well, there it is. We have all the parts. Uh, they're all in place. Now, whether they work or not, I, I really don't know. So I do know that the bellows for the servo need to be replaced. So why don't we just jump into that and get the bellows replaced and make sure it's holding vacuum before we waste time with a whole bunch of other stuff. So we'll do the bellows and then we'll start working on the stuff I don't know that works or not. So I got the bellows uh, bracket and everything pulled up out of the way. Now, after doing all that, I realized so that you could probably just reach down behind the bellows and get this bolt out, this nut off. So you didn't really have to take the whole bracket off. That's my, that's my mistake. Now I'll have to put it all back together. But anyway, you could take that uh, nut off at the back of the bellows and then this should this bellows should slip right out of place instead of unbolting it right there. Anyway, I make it hard for myself sometimes. Okay, I'm gonna pretend I know what I'm doing here. Uh, so you have to bear with me. So this is the bellows I have for replacement. It's a uh, 64 to 71 cruise control bellows. So it seems very common. I got this from Bird Nest and we'll see how it fits. So now I take the old bellows off again. This is all new, but it looks pretty straightforward to me. I think we just have to roll the rubber off and see what's inside first. And it's spring loaded, so you might want to be aware of that. There's the spring, and the spring does allow you to take that off. That plate looks bent, but I don't know if it's meant to be that way or not. So remember that. And I guess you'd have to kind of remember the orientation of the of the vacuum line because you'll want it pointing upward. Not much in them. That, that one ripped. <laughs> there we go. Set that aside. Now they do have a rubber, or they do have a wire in them. I don't know if the new one does or not, so I may have to salvage that wire. And the new one does not. It does not have a wire. So I'm guessing we have to salvage it. Oh, it's like quite a bit softer, that's for sure. All right, let's see if we can get this wire out without bending it up. There she is. Oh, there's a couple of rings. They aren't wires, they're just rings. Yeah, so it's just a ring. Yep. So just slide them in sideways. Turn them. Yep, pretty easy. It's one. Come on, you get in there. There, two rings already done. So I clean, I'm gonna clean these up a bit, these ends, so that they'll look good again. So give me a minute, I'll get the ends all cleaned up. All right, so the wires slipped in pretty good. So let's just get this back together. Tuck it down in there, get the, get the lip over it, like so. Come on, you. Pull up on that. Get it up in that first level. Next, next one will be a little harder because we have the spring to deal with. There we go. Come on, just roll over the edge. Like, and I don't have a price for this. Just go check Bird Nest. They'll have a price for you. So then get the spring back in. And this will be a little bit more difficult because the spring, you're dealing with the spring and the 
and everything all together. Hopefully I can do it without it popping out on me a few times. Oh, get back where you can see it. There we go. Actually, you can put the spring to assist you a little bit. There she goes. Look at that. Right in place. Good. That's pretty quick and easy. Now make sure your vacuum line is upward and your linkage is in the orientation it needs to be. Sort of like that. Vacuum line's at 90. It's at 45. All right, so now we got it back together. The uh, orientation of the lines are good. Let's see if it uh, holds vacuum. Where's my vacuum pump? There she is. I got my vacuum pump. Yep. Seems to be holding vacuum. There she is. One bellows done. Probably over vacuumed it, but anyway. There. Let's put her back in the car. So this is pretty straightforward. Get the bellows back down in there. The hoses are stiff. There we go. Get it in the hole. If you guys can see that. I'm going to go by feel. There she is. And then let me grab this other piece. I can't get at it. Out of the way, out of the way, out of the way, out of the way. There we go. Now you can put that nut on first if you like, but that's pretty much how it goes. So grab that little thing. And then there's E clips. Eclipse on everything. More eclipse than the than the solar eclipse. <laughs> anyway, that's it. And the eclipse goes on there, and then the eclipse on all the linkage again. But you can you can get back there and put that nut, take that nut off without taking that linkage off. Just that's all I'm trying to show you there. Okay, I've got the engine warmed up. She's at an idle. I uh, got good spring tension on the throttle. It was a little weak, but now I've got it tensioned up some there. So let's try this. You see the servo moving back. I'm just using my handheld vacuum pump. There she goes. There. All right. Working very well. Okay, now on to the next phase. Well, there we go. The bellows are replaced. They're working fine. So now the next problem in this circuit that we know of, um, so I'm going, I'm going after the, the issues that I already know. The next issue is that uh, speed control wheel on the console, and you know it won't move. So I did step ahead a little bit here uh, without videoing it. Uh, I'm trying to learn my way as well. So it's nice to, rather than waste all your guys' time in real time fixing, I did go ahead and remove the screen <coughs> from the metering valve. Well, the metering valve is where the end of that cable goes into. And I showed you that earlier in the video. And this screen comes out and it's part of the uh, process when you're setting these things up. So there's, you can adjust the cam in the uh, metering valve for that speed control wheel. Also, you can adjust the speed, uh, kind of a differential. It, it recommends two miles per hour over the speed you're trying to get. Now, when I bring you in, I'll show you this metering valve inside with the screen off. You'll see why I'm not going to touch the, the speed one. But I did manage to get the... Uh, the control wheel or the speed control wheel freed up. So let's bring you in and have a look at that. Okay, there's the metering valve, the inside of it. This is a screen that came off it. Now this paper is like a filter cloth, a filter paper. So I'm gonna have to find something to redo that with because it's pretty much garbage. 
So it just sits on over those two, you take these two hoses off and then you can take a small screwdriver and work it out slowly. It's quite, not fragile, but I don't, you don't want to tear it. Do that like that. So just kind of lift it out slowly like that and then it'll slide off. So there it's off. So this cam right here, this cam assembly, that is uh, what the wheel on the console controls. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm going to uh, move it and you'll, you'll see what I mean. So just give me a second. Okay, so the cam right now is in the minimum speed, like around 25 miles per hour speed position. And as I wheel it up, it's marked by uh, numbers three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I assume those are all the miles per hour. So you can wheel it right up like that and that's to the top and then back down for the, uh, for where you're supposed to start with it. So that's working freely now. So to get this uh, cam freed up for that uh, speed control wheel, I just grabbed the cam gently and was able to move it back and forth, sort of like this. Uh, it's down all the way now, and when I got it, it was up in the highest position, so it's down all the way, so it's kind of locked there right now. And I used a little bit of this uh, Super Lube. Uh, I like the Super Lube on uh, white metal parts, uh, non-iron, non-steel, because it uh, seems to work really well with aluminum and cup stuff like that. So Super Lube I put on, worked really well. It loosened it right up nicely. So you smooth the silk there now. All right, so I'm gonna clean this all up in here. Oh, before I go, uh, this <clears throat> there's an adjustment here you can do, and it, the book recommends that you set it with this screw right here, two, two, two miles per hour faster than what you're expecting this to, to operate at. Now, I don't, this is almost 60 year old plastic, so I'm not gonna to touch that and I'm not gonna do any adjustment in here. I'm just gonna leave it for now until we test this all out. If it needs adjustment later, we'll do it. But for now, it looks pretty good. I have no idea how fast the speed is on this. So I'm not gonna risk breaking a 60 year old piece of plastic. Well, there it is. We got the metering valve looked after, freed up the control, speed control wheel. I'll leave the screen off for now. Check your hoses, make sure your hoses are all in good shape before you get into anything else. I had to replace one hose from the uh, pressure pump over here that it runs off of the uh, speedometer cable. It was, it was rotten. Uh, I had to trim this hose a bit. This hose was okay. And the hose coming over from the, uh, from the center head. And that's what I'll talk about that too, as well Is that this is uh, not ported vacuum. This is full vacuum uh, right from the center head. It ties into the brake booster line, which is full vacuum, not, not, not ported. So we're going to try to get a sound out of this uh, vacuum relay right here. So if we can get this guy to click, then I'll pull this hose off and I'll put my pump on here and then see if we can get it to release the vacuum. If it releases the va holds vacuum and then releases the vacuum, it'll be okay. So let's do that. Got my test wire hooked up. Now I have the furnace running in the background, so it might be hard to hear this, but uh, this solenoid is active. So you listen to it here. So we tested this to make sure that it's, it's clicking and it's clicking. So we're testing it with vacuum now. So I've got it pumped up. I know my gauge is in bad shape. I've one on order. So I'll get, get a new one. So this should release this vacuum. There it goes. There, she drops right down. All right, so we know that works. So it holds vacuum and then it releases vacuum. Okay, so I've gone and I've, uh, I hooked that all up and with the solenoid activated, so the vacuum solenoid activated and pumping the uh, vacuum pump, I can get the bellows to move but I can't pump enough vacuum quickly to make it work properly. So what I'm gonna to have to do is turn the, the speed control wheel all the way down and start the engine and, try, and then try activating this 
this unit right here. So this unit doesn't get activated until this pressure pump gives enough pressure into here and then it activates with the switch up on the console then it activates that relay under the dash which starts this. So I'm not going to run the the differential just right now I'm not going to run the drivetrain so I don't have this speed pump tested out yet or this uh, pressure pumps not tested out yet so all I'm trying to find out is if if I have vacuum coming in through this vacuum solenoid that it actually moves the bellows in there and I'm going to use my jumper so I can disconnect it at any time so let's get her started up and see what happens okay so I've got the engine running she's on fast idle there now get her down a little bit more she may not stay running because the choke's not off yet but um, so now if I touch this yellow lead onto that vacuum solenoid it should activate if everything's working right in there it should activate that bellows or that servo let's see what happens look at that now it's back on fast idle again look at that it's working Well, we know that the solenoid works. We know that there's vacuum passing through the metering valve, through to the servo. That seems to be working okay. The only thing left, the only things left are the switch on the column, or the console rather, and the wheel on the console. Well, we know the wheel works, but we don't know if it's adjusting the speed or not. And we don't know if that switch is activating the uh, relay that activates the uh, vacuum solenoid so i would like to test the uh, pump neck so I, what i want to do is i'm going to jack up the back of the car and uh, put jack stands on i want to run this as if it's on the highway at 25 miles per hour to see if that relay works i mean i could test it with uh, jumpers and stuff but it's in a tight spot so I think I'm just going to jack it up because in the end that's what I'm going to do because I want to know if I can control the speed with that uh, control wheel and then I'll know if this whole thing is working and then I'll also know if this pressure pump is working because this pressure pump creates pressure uh, and it applies it to the diaphragm that's in that metering valve I want to check it all out uh, with it with the wheels off the ground and uh, to see if it works properly. All right, so I have the back wheels jacked up. They're clearly off the ground. I blocked the front wheels. I'm in the driver's seat, so I have full control over this thing. So I'm gonna start the engine up and then we'll see if this uh, cruise or cruise, this speed control will work. So let's give her a go. All right, get her leveled out here. So I'll activate the switch. Oh, and I have the speed control wheel all the way forward. So it's at the lowest setting. So I'll pull up the switch, switch stayed on. So now I can put it in gear. And I have to bring it up to, with the brake off, I have to bring it up to 25 miles per hour for this to work. Okay, so I couldn't get anything uh, from the driver's seat. So I still have the car jacked up in the back and it's in park, steering wheel spun over. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna make sure this relay is working. So right now, the switch on the console is shut off. So I'm suspecting there might be something wrong with this thing. So right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the vacuum on to the, to the, uh, so servo like that and i'm going to apply pressure on the on this diaphragm nothing all right so i'm going to go turn the switch on and then we'll do the same thing again okay the switch is turned on so that if that switch works and the relay works this solenoid here this vacuum solenoid should put 
vacuum through to here. And it is, I can feel it already. All right, let's see what can happen here. There it goes. So the diaphragm works. Okay, so that's all working. So I know the switch on the console works, the relay works. What I have suspicion is that that uh, pressure, sen pressure pump is not working. I managed to get it working once off of the console and it was erratic and not as smooth as I'd like for it to be. So what I, I'm gonna try this here. This seems to be sticking, this lever. This is the lever that the pressure from the pressure pump will will allow to go up and down so it depends on how much pressure it gets it moves this le lever up and down based on where it's sitting on the cam but this lever here is sticking it's pretty sticky so there's a little c uh, e clip in it right there so i'm going to pull that off and try to free that lever up so it runs a lot smoother than that and then we'll try it so i've been cleaning around in here this shaft is pretty uh, grubby so i gotta get it cleaned up um, it came off, you can get it off if you drop this wire down, but be careful, that's plastic. So you use little tabs on each side, drop it down out of the way, and then this will go back in and there's a spring that goes on top of that again. And the spring goes right in there, right in that little spot underneath that pushes back up on the, <clears throat> on this little plunger here. And this is what the, uh, and this is here, this is where the uh, diaphragm pushes down in on. So the diaphragm doesn't have a lot of movement and this one's moving free, but this shaft here was pretty grubby. So I'll get it cleaned up. I just use my needle nose pliers to uh, just pull back on the base of here. Don't, don't twist it, just pull it back slowly, wiggling it with a little bit of uh, lubricant, worked good. Put that down so I don't lose it. So I'm gonna get something to clean that shaft up a little bit and it'll lube it up. Hopefully that helps. Okay, so that's back in place. Um, E-clip back on. I used a little bit of synthetic grease and now it, I cleaned up the shaft with a little bit of emery cloth. It's flicking around pretty good. So now I'll get the spring back in it. So I cleaned up that shaft like I showed you and it, it, it works a lot freer now, but also and it's not in the right position right now, but that speed control wheel, when it's all the way forward, you're meant to leave a 16th of an inch gap right here. So this, what, what it does before this will kick in, this plunger has to be all the way down, no spring tension on it. So you can see I bent it up just slightly and now I've been able to get cruise control up on the wheel stands. So let's set her up and I'll show you. Let's give her a try again. So it was working good. I could control the throttle from the little uh, speed control wheel. So let's start her up and see what happens. And you'll be watching for that uh, bellows for that server to move. So I put her in drive, get her up to speed. There she is. Now I'm running it with the, uh, with the speed control wheel right there, look. You should be able to see that uh, servo moving back and forth. I'll bring her right down to as low as she'll go, see if it'll stay there. And I'll see if I bring it back up again. Yep. Oh, a little too high. Full control. So that's kind of like on here, it's saying it's around 40 miles per hour. There she goes, she's working. Sweet. Now let's check to see if it kicks out with the brake. Let's bring her up to about 40 again. Well, that, that's a, 
It's a little faster than 40. <laughs> there we are at 40 there. All right, let's see if the brake kicks it out. Yep. Oh, no. So the braking switch works, so we know that right there. Let's try it again. I'll switch it off and see what happens. There, she died right out. Let's see if I can pull it back on again. Nope. Got to go above the speed again. There she goes. She's back above the speed. Good. Bring her all the way down. Shut her off. Switches off. There's nothing happening. Pull it back on. There she is. All right. Well, that seems to be working pretty good. Well, that turned out good. Uh, I'm very happy with the results. Uh, uh, all it really was a minor, a minor adjustments. Um, this car sat from 1982 till 2022. That's 40 years it sat around. So there's no wonder there's a, a few stuck parts and whatnot. But this cruise control probably was working when the car was shut down. It works now. I'm very happy with it. I was worried there for a moment I was going to have to buy one of those uh, pressure pumps. And I was like, oh, man, that's going to be a big hit. I don't even know if they're available, but I'm sure I could get a used one on eBay for about $35,000. Anyway, um, that's it. It's running good. Um, I hopefully it helps someone out with a 65 Thunderbird to at least identify the components that are needed to make these run. And uh, if you have all the components, hopefully it helped you uh, get it going again. And maybe 64 is similar. I'm not sure. 65 is definitely different. It has the buttons on the wheel and that kind of thing. So it may, the principle is the same and some of the components may work the same, but I, I really don't know. So if you have a 66, um, probably best to just stick with a, a 65, a 66 owner's manual or repair manual. But with all that said, uh, I'm glad that you guys came along for the ride on this one, and I'm very happy it's running. So uh, I'm going to call her quits on this video, so we'll see you in the next one. Let's go cruise.